All right, welcome back. This is a video about my high pressure misting setup. I finally got it up and running. This is a thousand PSI mister. And uh, I'm gonna go over how to hook it all up and how to wire it. It's all done except for buttoning up this and putting the plate on. But I wanted to show you how the wiring goes. So I'll start at the beginning. I have the water coming in. I have a shut off valve so I can service the water filter. This is just a particle filter. So that way the nozzles don't get clogged up. From there, uh, just for fitting purposes, I put that guy on there, which also, also lets me turn it on and off, but it was the easiest adapter that I can get from PEX to a flex line, uh, which is, just, it's a hose, it's a, um, it's a, for your sink, it's a, it's a setup for your sink. From there, I have an adapter to go to 3 8 NPT, and then I have a relay, and I'll have all these parts in the, in the description below. So it's a relay, so that whenever the pump gets power, it'll kick on the relay, I'm sorry, solenoid valve. The solenoid valve will allow water to flow through here, supply water pressure to the pump, and also it'll trip this switch. Um, now if you don't have this, what's gonna happen is you'll have line pressure on it all the time, and the nozzles will, because this will let water flow through it, the nozzles will always be leaking. They'll always be misting at a low pressure, at tap pressure. So what this does is this shuts it off, shuts off the flow, unless you have power to your pump. Um, so what happens is power turns onto the pump and then it'll open this up, flip this switch, and this is a low pressure protect switch. So I have this connected to the, um, I'll, I'll go over the wiring second. So this goes to the switch and then it goes through the pump. And then from the pump you have a regulator, all right? And you're gonna have to have a adapter to go to a hose thread, or. Um, push to connect on the bottom of that and what that is for is it bypasses any surplus pressure so I talked to Kat one of the techs and he said the best way to set it up is where you have it regulating to the pressure you want and it should be always kind of bleeding off a little bit through the regulator and the reason why that is you want it to where the regulator is not seated you want it to be floating a little bit so it can react quickly to spikes in pressure um, from there I put a T in, or an uh, elbow, and then a cross T, and I have my pressure gauge so I can read out how much I'm pushing, and then I have a um, surge tube, and the surge tube, what that does is it's kind of um, rubbery, made to expand, and um, it'll kind of stop the vibrations a little bit, and it fills up with air, so the air will compress with each pump of the stroke, stroke of the pump. From there, it goes to the actual misters. This goes and feeds out to the misters, and I'll go over that when I go inside the room. Um, so that's the gist of the plumbing side of it. Uh, I have the, it's sitting in a pan in case if anything leaks. That way I don't spew water and flood my incubation below. And that this is a hot water heater pan. And then I have an adapter um, that goes down. I think it came with that adapter. But then I ran it with PVC pipes down into the room. So if I, I'll put a note on that pipe, like if this pipe is running, warning. Um, but then this pipe will always be kind of trickling. So I'll put a little note on that one saying normal operation, piss and water. Um, so yeah, that's the, that's the operation of it. For the wiring of it, for those that are looking at rigging this up. Uh, so I have my neutral coming in. It goes to the, the three wires that came bundled. It came with little uh, connections like, where are they? It had little eye connections and they were all bolted together with how it should be. So I just kept them in that bundle. So that powers the motor and then I have one tapping off of it and that feeds power to my relay. All right, it gives the, the neutral to the relay. Um, on my ground, the green just goes to ground, that goes to the ground, that's it. And then on the hot line, so the hot line coming in from the black line, coming in from the wire from my outlet, um, from my control power, it goes to this blue wire the blue wire then goes to the uh, the common on the, the 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 pressure switch. I also branched off to supply power to the relay. So whenever the black, which is your switched line, gets power, it'll send power to the common and send power to the relay. So now the relay has black and white, so the relay will open, okay? And then when the relay opens, it'll send pressure through the line, which will push this solenoid switch, uh, the pressure switch up and then you have it on the normally open um, line you have another wire that goes the orange one 
that goes and feeds power to the other three for the motor. So it's not till that this gets opened and this gets closed because the pressure that the motor finally kicks on. So that protects it, th this protects it from ever running dry. Um, if, if say you accidentally turn this off or if the line pressure drops from like the well going out or the house line going out, whatever the heck, uh, it'll protect your pump from running dry. Um, so that's pretty much it for in here. Now I'll go inside and show you guys what the misters look like. Okay, so this is the mister setup. I have it coming in through the roof and then I have a T and then I have two misters and also a pressure reliever bleeder thingamajigger. <laughs> I'll put it in the link below. Uh, I get all of this from Aeromist. So what happens is this one, when the uh, mister pump turns off and the pressure drops, this one opens up and allows the whole system to bleed out. That stops or at least reduces like this. See how there's like that little drop sitting on that one? Well, that's bad because what happens is that little drop stays there and it dries out and then you get um, the calcium builds up on it. So yeah, what happens is it'll build up calcium and it'll clog the tip eventually. So what the idea is that this allows the system to bleed out. Um, and it just goes in a normal, was it 1023 um, mister fitting and it looks just like a, a nozzle but it's bigger and it's just a pressure relief. When it first starts it'll pee a little bit and then it'll turn off and then when you're all done it'll pee a little bit. So that's the misting setup. Uh, one of the main advantages of these systems is the fact that it's low maintenance. So I'm not going to have to clean my reservoir out every, every week. Um, maybe once a month depending I'll see how it, how it goes. I'll have to change out the nozzles. I have extra nozzles on hand, so I'll just swap them out if they get clogged or they're not flowing right. And then once I get a couple of them that are not flowing right, built up, I can go and sit inside and, and scrub them down and soak them and do whatever. Um, but right now I'm running three. I have a, a fourth uh, connection and a fourth uh, you know, nozzle that I can put up there. So I'm gonna see how it works, um, depending on you know how, how humid it gets or whatever. And then, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for that and I'll show you guys it running. So hang on. All right, so this is it running. You can see it's a nice fine fog. If I put my hand out in front of it, it doesn't really get soaking wet. It just gets a little bit wet. Um, and the fog is, is definitely misting around in the air. I don't know if you can see it. There you go. And I have it with the other fan blowing it back the other way, so it's kind of making a swirling action. This one's pointing up a little bit. The other one's pointing down. I actually need to turn this fan on. Uh, I had it off for the video. But um, it's doing a good job so far. I do have to trim those little zip ties because they are causing issues. The mist is hitting the zip ties and then it's dripping off the, the zip ties uh, or just adjust it out at least. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna see how it goes. And again, I have the fresh incoming air over here. So that way it comes in over here, hits this, gets nice and wet, and then it goes into the room and, and uh, humidifies throughout the room with the nice cool air, so. So this is the unit running. It's not very loud. You can hear me talking over it. Um, sounds like a little motor running, like a little uh, bench grinder with no, with no um, wheels on it, you know? And there's a slight vibration from the pump. I know some people are concerned about how loud you know their humidification system is but I, I wouldn't say this is much louder than a, a little bit louder than a hydro fogger which is more like a kind of noise this is more vibration um, and you can see it's pumping out a thousand psi to adjust it you just back off this lock nut and get an allen and screw that in and out it doesn't take much pressure to uh, to get it adjusted so that's the uh, the pressure regulator and um, yeah that's pretty much it uh, so the, the main reason why I went this route and not like a full-on aero mist setup is this one is 0.13 gallons per minute. I think the biggest aero mist setup, most of them are 0.5 to 1 uh, gallons per minute. And I, th I think they have one that's 0.33, but um, this is significantly smaller. And the biggest issue that I've heard um, from people running the bigger setups is that it's too much moisture. That it fogs out the room too fast and that um, the room is very drippy and they end up short cycling the motor. So by running 
a lower flow pump, it's allowing me to have uh, all the benefits of a high pressure mister in a 250 square foot grow. So now I'm, I'm still trialing with this, it's brand new. So, you know, maybe this isn't the greatest, but right now I'm in love with it. I don't have to clean my hydrofogger. I don't have to clean a ultrasonic tote. I don't have to replace any discs and, and overhaul the whole unit every couple weeks. So the only maintenance will be once a year, I'll have to change the oil on the pump and then change the filter probably once a year because there's not a whole lot of flow going through this and there's already a pre-filter before this on my house that it, i have those big like scuba tank sized filters so but um yeah hope you like this video uh like i said i'll put all the parts listed below for you guys if anybody wants to build one and keep on mushing have a good one